Senator McKim has submitted a proposal understanding Order 75 today. It's shown at item 12 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? Thank you. I believe that is supported. Thank you, Senators. I understand that informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers in today's debate. With the concurrence of the Senate, I shall ask the clerks to set the clock accordingly and I'll call Senator Waters. Thanks very much, President. Well, Australia led the world in letting women vote, and now our country should lead the world in letting young people aged 16 and 17 vote. Yeah. Last week, the New Zealand Supreme Court found that it was discriminatory and a breach of human rights to deny 16 and 17 year olds the right and the opportunity to vote. Now, Australia doesn't have a National Bill of Rights, something that the Greens would like us to have, but the argument is the same. People should have a say on decisions that affect them. Young people are more politically aware than ever before, and they will be directly disadvantaged by, amongst other things, climate change, cost of living pressures, the cost of getting an education, responses to sexual assault, gender inequality and growing housing unaffordability. 16- and 17-year-olds make a significant contribution to Australian society. They can work. They can drive. They can pay taxes. They are carers. They are students. They are renters. At 17, they can fight in wars. And yet, currently, they are denied a say in who represents them and how their tax dollars are spent. Young people inherit a planet and an economy impacted by decisions that they have no say in. Now, detractors often say kids don't even understand politics, but young people have found ways to work outside the electoral system to call for the changes needed to protect their futures. From the school strikes for climate and legal action on whether the environment minister owes kids a duty of care, to young women signing petitions and meeting with politicians, crying out for decent consent education to drive down the rates of sexual assault amongst their peers. To the young man I met last weekend, Ned Heaton, who at age 11 started a campaign to end plastic toothbrushes and replace them with bamboo toothbrushes. He's now 15 and has written a book, a great Christmas gift for kids who love oceans and, and nature. Um, to globally, young women and young women of colour in particular, leading the debate about climate action. Young people are already shaping the future in so many ways, and they deserve the right to vote from age 16. Young people deserve more of a say in politics, so it's going to take more than just lowering the voting age. We need more young people elected to parliament to directly represent their interests and concerns. And until that happens, we here have a lot of work to do to meaningfully listen to and represent the voices of young people. We need to ensure that there's meaningful consultation with young people, and we welcome future contributions from the new Youth Steering Committee. We need to make Parliament a safe and respectful place that young people actually aspire to work. Earlier this year, Plan International Australia found that 72 per cent of young women do not feel that politics is an equal or inclusive space for them. Now, we know from experiences in other countries that lowering the voting age actually increases political engagement amongst young people, and that increased commitment stays with them throughout their life. It is good for democracy. Other countries allow people under the age of 18 to vote—Brazil, Cuba, Austria, Malta, Scotland. And in the wake of last week's court decision, New Zealand will introduce laws to lower the voting age. Australia should follow their lead. Young people get it. They just don't get a say. Let's change that. Thank you, Senator Waters. Senator McGrath. Uh, thank, thank you, President. To begin with, I want to pay tribute to, to the many members of the young Liberals, the young Nationals, and in my home state, the young Liberal Nationals, for the work that they do across Australia, but in Queensland, across Queensland, in standing up uh, for freedom and for standing up against some of the errant nonsense that you hear on, on the left side of politics. And I'll comm commend those young people from the centre-right uh, who, in the recent student union elections, took the fight and, and went down in a ball of flames, but took the fight to, to the broad left on campuses across Queensland and had to put up with just buckets of bile and buckets of nastiness from, from those supporting the Greens and from those supporting the Socialist Alliance and those supporting the left-wing tickets across, across Queensland. And, 
And so what they put up with on a daily basis is to be commended. And I speak as, as someone who reached the dizzying heights of, of chairman of the Sunshine Coast Young Liberals and president of the Griffith University Liberal Club. And notwithstanding the strong advocacy uh, for the issues impacting across Queensland, it is the view of, of the youth movements of, of political parties across Australia who are on the centre right of politics, on the freedom side of politics, that the voting age should stay as it is at 18. And that is the position of, of the coalition and the opposition um, in, in, in this chamber. Uh, we believe that 18 is the appropriate age at, at which the line should be drawn as to whether people can vote or should vote. Uh, and, and that has been long accepted practice, and we don't see the need to, to change that. But if we are talking about how we can enhance and uh, protect our, our democracy, there are certain things we should be looking at and we should draw attention to, and that is Labor's plans to, to introduce a financial gerrymander at a federal level. At a federal level. Labor's plans to bring in a financial gerrymander to try and lock themselves into power. So what Labor are up to, uh, President, Madam President, is Labor want to bring in the Queensland model. And, and for those who, who are listening at home and don't know what the Queensland model is, it's very simple. It's, it's limiting the Liberal National Party under a spending cap to $15 million. And the Labor Party is $15 million. And you think, oh, that's pretty fair. But under Labor's model, every union in Queensland also can spend up to $10 million. So on one side of the ledger, on the centre right, the Liberal National Party, led by, by David Christofilli, the next Premier of Queensland, notwithstanding the financial gerrymander, we, ha we are capped at, at $15 million. But on, on the left side, you've got the Labor Party, $15 million, and then I think there are 26 um, registered trade unions in, in Queensland, and um, I'm happy to, to be correct on that number. So they can spend up to $260 million. On, on a state election. So effectively, you've got $15 million against $275 million. So there is no spending cap in Queensland. It is a financial gerrymander, gerrymander designed to keep the Liberal National Party out of power. And what Labor are proposing at a federal level is to bring in, in a similar cap on, on expenditure. So the political parties will all be capped, but the unions won't be. The unions who are the, the campaign wing of the Labor Party, because we know the Labor Party is defunct as, as an organisational level on the ground, and it is run by the unions. There's nothing wrong, wrong with that. The Labor Party uh, was formed out of the union movement. But if we're talking about fairness in politics, and if we're talking about ensuring that we have a, a, a democracy that allows all voices to be heard, then we should ensure that all voices have the same means and the same ability in which to prosecute the arguments before the voters at, 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 at each election. And unfortunately, that is not the case in Queensland, and unfortunately, that is not what Labor are proposing at a federal level. They are proposing to bring in this financial gerrymander that will lock out, lock out so many people from participating in the democratic process so they can entrench themselves into power. And, and part of this plan, and we can see this, is uh, the IR bills that are, are before Parliament uh, this week and, and, and last week, in terms of the Labor Party ensuring that their, their, union, their union bosses are paid back, and they'll make sure that then the union bosses will put money into the Labor Party re-election when it comes. But we will win because you, we are on the right Your side of politics. Expired, Senator Pratt. Thank you, President. The Labor government supports uh, the inclusion of young people in government decision making, and we support the enfranchisement of all Australian, Australians. But we're not here today to rush into changing the fundamentals of our voting system without proper consultation. But I have to say, just last week, uh, we saw the first minister, uh, advisory council of some 15 young Australians and invited them to Canberra to engage with government to have a say on issues that matter to them. That was via the Youth Steering Committee, uh, which was um, under the last government. Uh, I had seen much defunding and uh, neglect of that, 
of that uh, inclusion. But this week uh, and last week, uh, Dr Anne Ali uh, has been working with these young people to drive the development of our government's new youth engagement model. This is about creating meaningful opportunities for young Australians to have a say on government policies and programs. This is a model being developed by young people for young people. It brings together a diverse range of life experiences uh, to uh, this role. It brings together young people from a really diverse uh, variety of backgrounds to have a say on a very wide variety of issues. When it comes to the issues confronting young people in Australia today, we know that young Australians are uniquely placed to tell us about the problems they face to shape the solutions that actually work for them. Young people in Australia are more than 15 per cent of our population, and we're not here to paint them with one brush of being young or being disengaged or only uh, caring about one issue. <coughs> uh, Labor uh, is committed to engaging with young people and learning about their issues and stories and their ideas for our nation. As a government, we want to not only work for Australia's young people, but also work with them. This is a far more effective model uh, from our point of view. So the committee sees some 15 young people, including from regional, rural and remote areas. We had a massive uh, uh, commitment from young people around Australia expressing their interest in, uh, in participating. Uh, we've, we now have participating young people from LGBTIQ plus communities, First Nations, culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds, diverse religious backgrounds, along with young Australians with lived experience of disability, caring responsibilities, mental health issues, uh, and they all have a place on this advisory committee. Uh, this means, uh, you, you can see from this, our commitment uh, uh, to Australia's young people. We, we had more than 1,200 applications from people aged 12 to 25 years old. So we know that young Australians are interested in our nation's political affairs and are interested in engaging in the decisions that impact them. And in, the, in this context, I certainly recognise that for many it, it includes a desire uh, to pursue electoral enfranchisement. So via this committee, we do hope that we will be able to engage with young people about their expectations for electoral enfranchisement. The Labor Party has led key electoral reforms in Australia uh, in order to consult with Australians very widely about how we uh, gain better inclusion uh, and participation from across our political spectrum. Electoral reform needs to be carefully considered and it needs to be addressed through multi-partisan forums such as Parliament's Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters and I uh, am also committed to seeing the Youth Advisory Committee, as well as uh, young people from right around Australia participating in these processes. In this context, we can see uh, that the Labor Party uh, is committed to meaningful electoral reforms. We were, for example, the first party to introduce funding and disclosure schemes in the early 1980s. Labor is absolutely committed to supporting oh, young sorry. people in our political sorry, system. Uh, Senator, your time has expired. Senator Roberts. Thank you. This is my message to our 16 and 17 year old Australians. You can OK boomer me as much as you want. I'll happily cop it. Yet as someone who's 67 and grey haired, I want to let you in on a little life secret. The Greens over here want you to think voting makes you an adult. It's a trap. It's something that no one here has really mentioned. Remembering when I was your age, you really don't want to be an adult yet. Trust me, it kind of sucks, and it's hard. The Greens are adults. 
listening to their speeches, do they seem like happy people? Adults have lots of bills. Car rego bills, electricity bills, water bills, gas bills, car insurance bills, private health bills, dental bills, phone bills, and more. You might even have to start paying for your own Netflix. Then you have to go to work every day, on repeat daily, for 40 years until you retire or die. 9am to 5pm at least in an office. Up early before the sun rises if you're a tradie. And don't forget to do all your laundry in between as well. Then if you work really hard and get a good job, the government will start stealing 33 cents out of every dollar you earn and waste it on something. There are just some of the, these are just some of the responsibilities that come with being an adult. As fun as I'm sure all this sounds, there's much more. These are just some of the responsibilities that come with voting. They will all come more quickly than you think, and you'll be voting sooner than you realise. Until then, just focus on finishing school or choosing a trade. Don't listen to the people saying that you need to protest or the world will end. It won't. For decades we've been told the lie that the world will end in five years or maybe ten years. Hang out with your friends. Just have fun and practice to get your pee plates. You'll soon have plenty of time to protest and vote and do all the boring stuff that comes with being an adult. Sooner than you think. Much sooner than you think. Thank you, Senator. Senator Payman. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. Uh, that's one way to look at it, Senator Roberts, but thank you for your contribution. As a 27-year-old and as the youngest member of the 47th Parliament, my commitment to empowering the voices of young Australians is unquestionable. It is important that young people understand the power of their democratic right to vote in a country like Australia, when there are so many examples around the world where this right has been diminished. The assurance that the value of one person's vote is no different to that of another is something we cannot take for granted. Speaking to fellow young people in Western Australia, I am always inspired by their passion for a better world. At the election in May this year, they knew there had to be a change to safeguard their future, and a change is what they got. Their voices are being heard by this government, Acting Deputy President. Since being elected, we took immediate action on climate change, something young people are so passionate about and have been calling for years. Restored our reputation on the world stage. We've made TAFE more accessible, campaigned for wage increases and job security so young people in our country can confidently support themselves whilst they're studying, saving for their first home or to go and travel the globe. These are real challenges that young people need and we are delivering. The Albanese Labor government is a government that young people can be certain has their back now and always, unlike what they had known for most of their lives under those on the other side. We have an incredible minister uh, for youth in Dr Anne Ali who is working tirelessly to engage with young people for young people. I will always work in this place to increase enfranchisement, education and information about electoral matters so that young people understand the importance of our democracy. With this in mind, now is not the time to lower the voting age without the proper consideration of Australia's electoral landscape. But it is time to consider practical ways of engaging with our youth um, and young people to educate, empower and promote the democratic rights and freedoms we have as Australians. Now, some of these ideas are already in place and practised, while others are less frequent but as important. I'd like to see more educational school visits discussing with students their curriculum of humanities and social sciences and how the theory they learn has practical implications on parliamentary uh, operations and processes and procedures. I'd like to see more young people invited to roundtables about matters of importance to them. This will enable us to listen, truly listen, to the challenges that are unique to our nation's youth and constructively brainstorm solutions, but also allow them to contribute towards the decision-making processes of legislation that will impact their lives in the years to come. I'd like to see more invitations extended to young people to visit parliament houses um, across our states and territories or to show 
sorry, or to shadow the Member of Parliament for a day or a week to understand and witness the hectic schedules of parliamentarians and appreciate the behind-the-scenes work that we put. I would also like to see uh, more young people involved in youth organisations, university clubs and young labour for the people in my home state of Western Australia, which welcome young people of all ages and ensure they understand the political system before a ballot paper is shoved in their face and they're asked to vote. I believe in making informed decisions and being well versed when casting my vote to elect a government that shares my values and will implement policies for the greater good of all Australians. A government that is inclusive, progressive, responsible and compassionate. Labor has always been the party of meaningful electoral reform that creates a transparent and accessible electoral system. Future discussions about this issue in the context of Australia's democracy is something we are open to. But as our electoral system exists today, young Australians are being represented in this parliament. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Steele John. Thank you. Well, what we've heard uh, in the debate so far uh, is opposition to 16 and 17 year olds getting the right to vote from the Liberal Party and lukewarm non commitment from the ALP. And I would ask all MPs who have contributed to this, to this debate that have decided to give their view on this issue to engage in a bit of a thought experiment. Imagine uh, if you were being asked a really important question about your life and you were not allowed to actually answer. In fact, imagine that you were legally prevented from answering such a question, while well, other people in another place uh, have a say and are encouraged to use that to make a decision for you in order to make a choice on your behalf. And all of this being done with the assumption uh, that you uh, cannot make a decision for yourself, are not fit to give your view, to speak your opinion. Doesn't this sound awful? Doesn't this sound even discriminatory? I think people in this room would absolutely hate it. Well, this is the reality. This is the reality for every person who has yet to turn 18 when it comes to government. Don't you think it's unfair that if you are looking as a young person at 114 new coal and gas projects when people uh, and communities are facing the destruction of climate events uh, and you want to protest about it, you want to oppose it, and yet you are not allowed to have a say in whether or not those projects go ahead, whether or not those governments are re-elected? Don't you think it's unfair that 16 and 17 year olds who are planning their futures and choosing universities with the weight of tens of thousands of dollars in debt on their shoulders in education fees uh, when they should and could have the ability to have a say at the last election about whether or not those policies should continue or whether or not university should once again be made free. Well, the Greens believe in empowering everyone to be involved in decisions that impact them, increasing the voting age, uh, decreasing the voting age uh, to 16 and 17 uh, will, have an enormous, uh, will have an enormous impact and be a profound step towards a more inclusive, uh, proactive, working democracy. And I'm proud to be part of a team that will push for this and see it done. It is not fair to exclude 16 and 17-year-olds from the democratic system, not at all. It is time to begin fixing the disparities in the system by lowering the voting age to 16. Thank you, Senator. Senator Thorpe. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I welcome this motion moved by my colleagues Senator McKim and support the lowering of the voting age to 16. The law of this land is our law. It's the oldest law on the planet. First Nations people in this country are the oldest continuing living culture on earth. Our society ensured that we have equality. Equality meaning that our young people were just as important as our old people. 
the age of 16, we have many, many responsibilities as First Nations people. We have responsibilities of our siblings, we have responsibilities to our old people, we have responsibilities to our cousins, our brothers, our sisters, and a lot of our people are having babies at 16. I was 17. A lot of our young people are paying taxes. A lot of our young people don't get a say at all. Victoria has already acknowledged the cultural authority of our young people in its treaty process by including all First Nations people over the age of 16 on the roll. This sets a precedent for the inclusion of our young people in the decisions that impact our people. Young First Nations people are the key to our survival. It's not our future, it's their future. And we must do the right thing by giving them a voice on their journey towards their Thank you, future. Senator, Senator Cox. Uh, citizenship requires rights, identity and participation. And all of these have been eroded over time in this country by partisan politicking. We know that membership of the major parties is on the decline and the trend is evident in many liberal democracies. Well, here's an opportunity for them. Get on board with lowering the voting age and start listening to young people and taking them seriously. And you never know, they might just join one of your parties. The Greens have long advocated for lowering the voting age to 16 and have introduced legislation at federal, state and territory levels to make this a reality. The simple act of lowering the voting age would demonstrate a strong commitment to young people of this country, our next generation. It is their future that is at stake, after all. Young people across this country have been taking action for years now, telling politicians that we are in a climate emergency. The least the parliament can do, if it's not going to listen and take swift, meaningful action to transition this country to net zero, is to actually give those young people the right to vote and vote you out of here. The core principle of representative democracy is that, through democratic participation, representatives who can draw on their expertise, knowledge and opinions of their constituents when forming policy and making decisions. Young constituents have very valuable knowledge, interests and experience that should actually be recognised. Those who argue against lowering the voting age and, uh, claim that 16 and 17 year olds are closer to uh, children than adults in terms of their ability to reason and make sound decisions, and I've certainly seen that in my time here. Young people do not lack political knowledge, cognitive ca uh, capacity, good judgment and maturity that's needed to engage in their democracy. In fact, they have all of those things. Many people, uh, our young people, um, need the right to vote, and we should be giving it to Thank them. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Senator Orman Payne. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. More countries around the world are recognising the importance of providing young people with the right to vote. A few days ago, the New Zealand Supreme Court ruled that the voting age being set to 18 was discriminatory. I hope that the conversations that are now happening in New Zealand will also renew debate in this country regarding our voting rules. Young people are informed, thoughtful and increasingly politically engaged. Our national curriculum includes comprehensive civics and citizenship education, which all of our young people have completed by year 10. They should also have the right to participate actively in our electoral process. Instead, they are being actively excluded from participating in decisions about their own futures, the outcome of which may not even be seen by some older Australians, only those young Australians who didn't make them. The Greens have supported lowering the voting age for many years, with my Senator, Senate colleague Jordan Steele-John introducing a bill in 2018. At 16, young people can work, pay taxes, have children and make medical decisions about their bodies. The ability for young people to be charged as adults and be subject to imprisonment in adult facilities demonstrates the disconnect between their responsibilities and the lack of opportunity to vote. 
ignoring this suite of responsibilities whilst refusing to allow young people the opportunity to contribute to participate in the electoral process actively undermines the rights of young people in this country. Young people are currently facing a cost of living crisis, a rental market that's unaffordable, and they're going to be the ones most impacted by the climate crisis. Young people are more than capable of voting on issues that matter to them, care deeply about these issues, and need to be involved in decisions relating to their futures. Thank you, Senator. The Senate will now. Oh, sorry. The time for this discussion has expired.